I weigh in tonight at 246 pounds. I hail from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Mr. Jughead. Let's get the bid story. Hey everyone, this is Jughead82, and this is a video response to the wrestling Jesus. Basically, he did 10 reasons why the WWE's rating system sucks. And I whole 100% agree with the wrestling Jesus. Okay, first thing, sex. WWE, no more sex. Sex doesn't exist anymore. Uh, if any of you guys remember the whole little segment that Lita and Edge did a couple years back where we saw Lita's booby, yeah, no more of that. No more. No, shame on you. You can't watch boobs. But yet and still, you have, you know, strangely clad women on TV. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that. I mean, I guess they might just have, you know, Maurice come out with a sweater on and shit, and, you know. <laughs> The next thing, uh, number two reason, uh, hardcore storylines. Uh, the WWE storylines have been repetitive because of the simple fact they can't do edgier storylines like they did during the Attitude Era. Anybody remember Katie Vick? Yeah. Necrophilia was in the WWE one point. Kane apparently had sex with a dead woman. You can't do that now in the WWE. Blood. Yeah. Blood now uh, you will not see anymore in the WWE because they have a no blood policy now and they've been doing this for a minute they even had a pay-per-view extreme rules what was extreme uh, no blood and the weird thing is if I remember back in the 80s and 90s the WWF had blood I mean even even though that was considered kid-friendly wrestling back then that still there still was blood I mean look at a match like Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaw boot count match Hulk Hogan bled everywhere. I mean, you know. But yeah, that point about that swearing. Stone Cold Steve Austin, son, do you remember that? What? Cussing. Apparently can't be used in the WWE. So I guess they might can get away with hell and damn. But other than that, they probably can't say anything like ass. I was watching TNA uh, just recently, Thursday, and uh, they said asshole like 15 times, and it wasn't even bleeped. And uh, I commend TNA for still being edgy, even though they're not getting the ratings that they should be getting. And that's why TNA all the way. Uh, fan signs being removed. Yeah, apparently fans can't have the freedom to bring signs, even though they pay their hard-earned money to come see a WWE event. They can't use their signs. That's bullshit as well, because I figure if I spend the money to go watch John Cena then I should be able to bring whatever the hell I want to the arena. I mean, I understand some signs might be blasphemy or something like that, but then again, it doesn't matter if you bring a sign that says TNA is great. <laughs> you know, Cena sucks. I think they took a couple bunch of them out the arena one time. I mean, come on, man. I mean, that's... WWE is gearing two more toward children. Now, in this situation, I say it's a mixed bag because, first of all, yeah, uh, I started watching wrestling as a kid, so, you know, but the thing is, when you met that middle point around, like, 97, when the Attitude Era really was getting its, you know, its juices going, uh, you still have to realize, you you still have to market toward the 18 to, like, 45 demographic, because the money that's being spent on paper views is not being spent by children, it's being spent by adults, so you have to, you know, you know, geared toward the adult scene as well as you know throw a horn swaggle in every so often but you need to gear toward the adults main screen because those are the people that are actually keeping the WWE afloat buying their products now in the children's point uh, they use their money what to maybe buy the Smackdown versus Raw video games and probably some action figures from the WWE but for the majority of the money that's going into the world wrestling entertainment it's from people like us <laughs> so that's what I feel about the gear toward children's thing Comedy in the WWE has been toned down a lot. Uh, used to, usually the comedy was very edgy. I mean, 
I remember the DX address to the WWE, uh, the WWF, uh, where they said a whole bunch of naughty words, and uh, they said a whole lot of things that, you know, if the WWE was to do that now, they would probably get kicked off TV. And, and if you remember back in uh, 2006, when DX just came back together, they did that whole Vince man, Vince loves cock. Yeah. You can't even say that even if you are talking about a chicken. Um, number eight, I have them all numbered down, uh, the messages. And if you guys are, you know, are wrestling fans, subscribe to the Wrestling Jesus TV. Very, very great channel. He's very commit. He has very comedic style. And, you know, he does a lot of videos really dedicated to wrestling. So if you're a real wrestling fan or you really like wrestling, subscribe. Um, merchandise. Seems like the wrestlers that get hype are the ones that sell the most t-shirts. Yeah, that is really fucked up because, yeah, John Cena sells t-shirts. So we can keep him as the number one guy in the company. Because uh, apparently the Shelton Benjamin t-shirt wasn't selling good. And that also brings me back to Shelton Benjamin, who is a great wrestler. He might was a little sucky on the mic as related to giving promos. But still, great wrestler. He still can make good matches with anybody. But... WWE keeps who they want and lets go who they feel they need to let go. The same with the uh, women's division. Um, Mickey James, if you've been watching Raw and SmackDown recently, you've been hearing we want Mickey Chance during Diva matches because they want to see a actual women's wrestler that can wrestle. Because Mickey James, you know, she's a great wrestler, but they let her go. Unfortunately, they keep uh, these sub sub sub, sub sub par like the Bella Twins and shit. Just you know, I guess. Because apparently they're, they're eye candy. But then again, that falls back on the six, so they can't be too eye candy because you might have to put them on you no know, sweaters. The last, uh, well, number nine, uh, was related to edgy wrestlers. Uh, Edge, the rated R superstar. He's going to have to be the rated PG super beast or some shit like that. <laughs> because Randy Orton, even though Randy Orton still has his same dichotomy, uh, they toned down his character a lot. Randy Orton was doing some really fucked up shit back in the day. But apparently it's not good for, uh, you know, the PG. Vince McMahon feels that the PG, you know, era is the era to go for. And last, number 10, hardcore matches. You remember Mick Foley versus The Rock? Yes. Mick Foley got hit like 16 times in the head with a steel chair in this match. It was an I Quit match back in 1998. If a wrestler even gets a flinch of a chair shot to the head, oh, he's got a concussion. Yeah, although I don't, I like ECW, old ECW, and you know what I'm saying, a chair here, a chair there, and I understand that, that they're looking out for the wrestler's health, but hell, they don't even do chair shots where the wrestler raises their hand to block it a little bit. I mean, what? I mean, the only thing you can hit him in the back, and hitting someone in the back with a steel chair still can cause serious injury events. Look up your info. But, yeah, WWE, and I really do feel that maybe the WWE PG thing is going all out there because of the whole Linda, McNa Linda McMahon thing with the running for Senate. And Vince McMahon, I guess, is catering for his, to his wife because he wants to be a good husband. But you are really destroying what your product once was. WWE, when they first bought out WCW, I mean, people were like, wow, yeah, yeah, hey, they bought out WCW. WCW was tanking. But apparently, you know what? I want TNA to see so bad so they can slap WWE on their ass and make them maybe get back to what they once were. But yeah, this has been a video response to the Wrestling Jesus TV. If you're not subscribed to him, check his channel out and see if you like it and subscribe. This is Jugget82, signing off.